hello everyone and welcome to my video tutorial on using Google Groups to administer your courses if you are teaching a course in an institution maybe a university polytechnic high school primary school if your university does not have a learning management system such as blackboard or canvas or a custom built one then you have to realize that Google has provided some tools for you for free to enable you administer your courses without stress. I have been using these tools for many years and I thought I should share the knowledge with other people who may find it useful. So if you have a Gmail account, Google has given you 15 gigabytes of storage free of charge. You can store 15 gigabytes of data somewhere in Google repository and they don't charge you for it. You can even have two Gmail accounts. It's allowed. In that case, you have 30 gigabytes. So how can you use such a large amount of free cyberspace memory to administer your courses and make life easy for both you and your students? That's what we want to learn about here. First of all, you have to be signed on to Google. You can see my photograph here. I have a Google account and I have logged on to Google. Now, I have been using Google Groups. So if I go to groups.google.com, if you type it there like that, and press enter, if you have been using Google Groups before, it's going to show all the groups that you have either used before or created before or groups that you have been a member before for the first semester of last session I was teaching a course CSC 113 first semester 2022 and I created the Google groups for them second semester I realized that it may be better to split the class the groups into two groups because there were two departments taking the course CSC for computer science and CYB for cyber security so if you have a very large class and a lot of students from different departments are taking the course you may want to create a group for each one of the courses before I create the group let's see how do I use the group to administer my teaching of the students if we take for example CSC 113 group you click on it you can see all the posts that I sent to the group so you see a new conversation you can send a conversation and it goes to the group later we we'll see how you can add students to the group but now let's see how we use the group another problem is if you use whatsapp to send things to your students if your students don't download the whatsapp on time eventually they won't be able to download it again after some time maybe their phones got stolen and then they can't access the information so the advantage of using google groups over whatsapp or other chat or other means is you can send a large file to your students using google groups it goes to them every lecture note every laboratory session every announcement you want to make the moment you post it here every student receives it automatically in their email and it stays there permanently for years until you delete it so we are going to create a group for a course which I'm going to be teaching this semester the course is CSC 213 and the title is Operating Systems 1. I have created a course synopsis which consists of uh, a PowerPoint file and lecture 1 of the class which is also a PowerPoint file. I'm going to save them as PDF so I can upload both the PDF and the PowerPoint file. But first of all, let's create a group. So the name I've chosen for the group is DOUCSC 213 Semester 1 2023. You can also create it for different classes like I did before. If I want to create it for computer science students, I can just say CSE. But I want to leave this for all students who will be taking the course. So 
copy this come here and say create group group name is what we have here and the email is going to be this group name at googlegroups.com so so whenever you are sending an email it goes to this email and every member of the group receives the email like this at this address if you send an email to this address it will go directly to the gmail of every member you are going to add to the group so let's leave it like this we've created the group you should add a group description so I call this operating system one next we have to choose privacy settings who can search for the group only group members should be able to search for the group not anyone on the web because it's a private group who can join the group only invited users not anyone can ask not anyone can join because it is not a public group we click next we now want to add group members for only people who have gmail account can join a google group so what I normally do is tell my students to get a descriptive gmail account and send it to me I give them my gmail address which is innocent.okoloko at gmail.com if they don't have a gmail account before they should create something similar like the name they used to register or something that represents their name and send it to me so I have a list of gmail addresses here to begin with make sure you have the electronic copy don't type by hand copy and paste to avoid errors I'm going to select the first 10 emails in this list there are 45 students which I can select once if I was a paid user of Google Groups but because I am a free user of Google Groups I can only add 10 members directly at a time so I click paste invitation messages welcome to CSC 213 so I say directly add members these are the members that have been added if you have somebody like a, a co-teacher of the course a co-lecturer an assistant lecturer I'm going to add the name of an assistant lecturer who will be assisting with the course so he is also a member of the group the name is added now mind you if you already have 10 emails you cannot be able to add the name of the person the reason why I was able to add an extra name is there are actually less than 10 emails here create group group creation in progress I am not a robot create group so if you come here you see the list of all the students that are already in the group nine members already so there are nine students sorry eight students one assistant lecturer and myself making the nine you can go to the group now so we are in DOU CSE 213 semester 1 2023 that has nine members the first thing you should do is add all members that are supposed to be there so you say people shows you the group add members come back to your list of emails continue from where you stopped 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 at a time there are 45 students you may think that adding these students one by one is a difficult or a tedious task if your students are very many like maybe 200 300 1000 students but the stress of taking care of 1000 students directly is worse than this in a few minutes we are done with the addition add students directly and then life is easier for you thereafter add members 
If it says zero members successfully added, go back to add members again. So, we have 42 members in the group already. That is including me and the assistant lecturer. We have uh, 42 members, meaning that 40 students have been added in just a few minutes. So, the rest of the students who we don't have their email, we can send a message to them via their friends, people who know them, through the same group to submit their emails so that we can later add them to the group. Now that the group has been created, that the members are there, the first thing we want to do is send a welcome message to the students. So you see, it says the group has been created and is ready to use. Every email you send, every message you send in this group will go to every person, including yourself. Any member of the group can post a message to this group. It will go to everybody, including yourself. Alright, so how do you post the message? You just say, click new conversation. Subject. Welcome to CSC 213. So, Type a message here to welcome the students to the class. If I click post message, message posted, it goes directly to every person who has been registered in the group, including myself who posted the message. Now you should check to confirm from your own email whether you yourself, who is a member of the group, received the message to be sure. If you did not receive it, go and post it again. Sometimes it doesn't go because you are a free user. Priority is given to those who pay. And when the line becomes less congested, your message is sent when you're a post. So, did I receive the message? Yes. If I receive the message, I have assurance that every student who is a member of the group has received the message automatically and it shows in their email notification if they set it up. The reason why this is good and better than WhatsApp is messages you post to this group are going to remain permanently unless me, who is the creator of the group, deletes them. So, a student told me the other time that his phone was stolen. Therefore, he has lost all the information I sent. Therefore, I should send the information back to him. I said, no. When I posted those messages on the Google group, they went to a Google server in the US. It's a cloud server. So the day you pick up a new phone and log on to your Google, the information is right there waiting for you. It's not in your phone. It's not like WhatsApp that if you don't download it after some time, you can't download it anymore. No, this one is permanent until I delete them. So that is why this is better than using WhatsApp. Moreover, as you can see, we can share very large files using this method, which we cannot do with WhatsApp. Now that the group has been created and we have sent our first message, I want to now upload the class notes for the class which will be taking place in two days' time. I have a course synopsis. The size of the file is uh, 2.79 megabytes. What I normally do is I save the file as a PDF also, so there is a PDF version. The reason is Many students cannot deal with the PowerPoint version because they don't have a laptop to bring to class. And I want them to be seeing the notes so they can come with a device without even printing the note. If they have a smartphone, they can be viewing the PDF file directly in their smartphone while I'm teaching or in a tablet or on a laptop. But if any one of them has a laptop and can download the PowerPoint file, they have enough data, then they can follow directly from their laptop. So let's have an alternative file called PDF. I save the file as PDF and I have both a PDF and a PowerPoint version to upload. If you come back to the folder, you will see that a PDF file has been created and it is just 1.46 megabytes, which is less than the 
two point something megabytes of the PowerPoint. We are going to upload this now so every person can receive the email. Click New Conversation. What I normally do is come to the name of the file you want to upload to make it descriptive to the recipient so that they know exactly what you are uploading. I just copy the name of the file and put it here. They know what the file is about already. Then you click this Add Attachment. You can either browse to a folder if that's what you are used to. But the easy thing that I do is I just click and drag. These are the two files that I want to upload. So I click them and drag and put here. Now my two files have been uploaded. Students can either decide to pick the PowerPoint to download or pick the PPT to download. It's up to them. You don't need to write any message if you don't want unless you have a note to give to them. In this case, I don't need to write any message. I just say post. Wait for it to post. Make sure it has posted. Don't just rush away from the page because sometimes it doesn't post. You have to post again. Now it says message posted. So if you go to the conversations, click the conversations, you will see that the message has been posted here. Any person who is a member of the group that probably have not received the notification for some time, because of network problem or some other issues, you may not receive the notification on time. But endeavor to always check conversations before maybe one or two days before any class is going to take place because the notes are most likely have been posted there so you can click conversations ordinarily every person who is registered in the group should receive an email notification that's the way it should be if everything is good but in case you have not received a notification just click conversation and the message will be here so we have posted our course synopsis. The next thing I want to do is post the lecture for class one. So you see this file is very large. It is 40.5 megabytes, which we may not be able to post directly to the Google groups. But what can happen is the information can be shared directly with the Google group so that students who are in the group can be able to go to their own Google Drive and see the information. First thing I want to do is save this as PDF. So if we come back here we discover that a PDF file has been saved, created and the size is just 3.12 megabytes as against this 40.5 megabytes, which is what students should actually use to get the full experience of the lecture using the PowerPoint slides. So what can we do about this? I want students to also receive the notes. So what I will do is start a new conversation, come back to the notes, right click. So we say rename, copy it. Come here and paste it. That is class one. So we are going to click and drag that PDF file. If we go to our file name, we just click the PDF file. We are not going to send the PowerPoint file directly because it is too big. So we only send the PDF file. file is here. You don't need to attach a message. Just post the message and wait for it to post. It is posting. Okay. If you click conversations, if any person, any member of the group click conversations, the lesson note is already here for them to download. Now, Normally we should receive an email. I don't know why I'm not receiving notifications at the moment. Maybe it's my Gmail. But normally, every student should receive a notification of the notes sent. Okay. I 
All right. So, this is a new experience for me. I have been receiving the emails that have been sending, but it's sending to spam. I wonder why I created the group and it's sending me to spam. So, if you face the same experience, you see, this is good. This is a good experience because someone else who is a member of the group might also be receiving the message in his spam email. You see? Because I was not looking at spam, first experience for me, after using Google Drive for many, many years, many years, more than 10 years, I believe. This is the first time I will be creating a group and it will be taking me to spam for one reason or the other. So if you have a similar experience, just go to your spam email because I was beginning to wonder why is it that I'm sending these things and I'm not receiving it because it went to spam. So you come to spam, you select it and you say not spam. When you say not spam, if you go back to your inbox, you will discover that all the messages are actually being posted when they tell you it is. This thing has been sent to me four times, which means it has been sent to students four times also. So what do you do in a situation like this? What you should do is you can send a message to members of the group about the course synopsis. So if we go back to group and you say new conversation, you just say sorry if you have received any messages multiple times. You may not be able to post the message if you don't have something inside it. So just put a message inside it. If you put a message inside it, then you can be able to post the message. Post the message. Sorry if you have received any messages multiple times. Now, when I come back to my email, you will discover that it has already sent the message to me. So I'm sure now that every message I send on the Google Groups is going to everybody. So we have sent the course synopsis we have also sent the first class to the students some students who have laptops or computers need the PowerPoint file to follow how do we do that this is where Google Drive comes into play so what I'm going to do is I will go to my Google Drive the same way you will go to your Google Drive drive is here click on it you have like I said before you have 15 gigabytes of free storage to use for your Google Drive. For the many years I've been using it, I've only used 9.96 gigabytes out of the 15. So there's a lot of data to play with. The process of sharing the large PPT file with the students is just to click the PPT file, drag it to anywhere in your Google Drive. Anywhere, any folder. You can create a specific folder for that. Right, so I'm going to cancel the upload because I don't want to waste my data. I have already uploaded it. So, this is where I have already uploaded it. This is the file. You can see it is 40.5 MB. How do I now send it to this group? See, whenever you have a, a Google group name like this, the email address is at Google Groups dot com. So we are going to copy this. We want to now share this big file that we downloaded, this large file that we downloaded. We want to share it with that Gmail address, that group address. It says add people. You want to share it with some people. So you just say, in fact, okay, 42 members, it confirms the group. Since the group has been confirmed here, you just put the file name there, indicating that this is the PowerPoint file for the PDF file that was uploaded for lecture one or class one, and you click send. access updated meaning that 
every student can be able to assess the message. I just received an email notification now. Presentation shared with you because I'm a member of the group. So every other member of the group, every student already received this message that says presentation shared with you. So you click on it and you click on open. Because I am already a member, it's now happening in PowerPoint in Google Slides. Okay? Now, I don't need to open this. It's not necessary. Another thing is, if you did not receive the notification, how would you know? Just go to your drive. I will close this and start all over again. If you open a new window, as long as you are logged on to Google, you click on this and you click on drive, your drive. You can go to shared with me. I want to know which informations have been shared with me by any person from anywhere in any group. So I click shared with me. When you click shared with me, all the files that people have shared with you will show. So you see, the information I'm seeing here is students projects that were shared with me for the last course we did. Some of the students projects were 50 megabytes. They can't send it via email. But because they are on Google and they have 15 gigabytes to play with, I told them to share their projects with me. That is why I have them here. That is the power and the advantage of using these free tools that Google has given to us. So any student who wants to access the PowerPoint file, which is very large, can come to share with me and download the file or even watch it online. All you need is data. Once you have data, you are good to go. When we share this file with somebody, the fact that you receive a notification does not mean that it has used your data. It only uses your data when you eventually download the file or when you use the file online. So if we come back to the group, we can see that we have been able to upload information to the students. Every student in the group receives the information, every member, sorry, every member of the group receives the information on time. So this is how I've been administering the courses. Whatever I need to post to the students is posted here. Any information I want to send to the students is sent here. And the information remains here permanently for as long as I allow it to be. Even if the students leave the university, the information is still there. They can still be able to access it. So I hope somebody finds this information useful to help them to administer their courses or the administration of whatever work they are doing in any way they can. And one final thing, if you found this video useful to you, please like, share, and subscribe for more video. That encourages me to produce more learning tutorials just like this. Thank you very much.